Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. I want to show you how I finish off a chamfer on a leg. And this is one I've already done. So the chamfer stops, doesn't go all the way through, it stops here so that the two aprons can go in there and not, and not have the chamfer interfere. Uh, if the chamfer went all the way through, the shoulder on the apron would end up cutting into the chamfer and that doesn't look very right. So I've got to show you how to do it. But I'll show you really quickly what it is that we're making. This is a standing desk. This is the prototype, so we always build a prototype out of inexpensive materials so we can go through, make whatever changes, get the right height, get the right look. This actually is going to have a wooden hinge on the lid, and if you've never seen that, here's the prototype of that. So it looks like that. And we have a little kit that we make wooden hinges with, and it's as simple as uh, that. Several pieces in there, because that allows you to do four different sizes. So you can have quarter inch, three eighths, half, or three quarter. So there's two different bit holders. One holds an eighth inch bit, the other one holds a sixteenth inch bit. This is the eighth. You put the bit in there and then lock it in place with the set screws. Choose whichever size dowel you're using, in this case half inch. Screw that on. Mount this in a drill. And then the problem in making this hinge is keeping that center hole perfectly centered so that it'll pivot around the center and not be off center. So while this is spinning, you simply stick the dowel in there, you bring it out, you've got a perfectly centered hole. Then we have a little piece of eighth inch rod and that goes in there. You only use about a quarter inch long piece, then you made it up with the opposite piece and you get a perfectly centered hole, works great. Anyway, so onto the leg. Oh, by the way, this is the uh, this is, once we've got this designed and we've figured it all out, and we go through the details of actually drawing in what the through wedge tenon will look like so that we can determine what size we want it to be. At first we thought we were going to use just a 3 8 on this cross piece, but it didn't quite look big enough, so then we went with a half inch, and that's one we've settled on. So, I'll show you both. And we do this on our online workshop, so it's, uh, it takes a while because we film three 45-minute episodes each week. So there's the double through wedge tenon, which is this joint right down here. And the wedge is made out of holly, so it's nice and white, and it'll show up nice, particularly as the cherry ages. And then we just did this one last night, so this is the first uh, leg. So this is the half inch. So this would be this corner over here, and that's what it looked like when it's done. Now there's no finish on there yet, but that'll sit in there just like that. So let me show you how I go about finishing that off. Now, <coughs> I've used a router, and this is a uh, this bit is a uh, chamfering bit, and I like this too because it's got a nice wide bearing. Sometimes the narrower bearings will leave a mark on your board. This doesn't. However, it leaves little scallop marks. Any rotary cutter is going to leave scallop marks, whether it's a jointer or a router bit. And we've got to get rid of them. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've got this trapped in my bench, uh, in my uh, in my tail vise. Make sure that that's seated. Now, I usually feel to determine which direction. You, you try to look at the grain and that doesn't always apply. So usually you can feel it more accurately than you can actually tell by trying to read the grain. So I think I'm going to be going this way. I'm using my little squirrel to this is the Lee Nelson plane. I like it because it's small enough and it's going to allow me to get in here fairly close. I can't come right to here and this has to be finished off but I want to be able to come in and at least get that nice and clean first. And you've got to be able to balance and that's not a lot of surface to balance on so I use my finger running along this surface in order to help and uh, your thumb sits on that little spot right there. So I'm coming in here on an angle, so I can pick up a shaving. Usually I have to do this twice, sometimes three times. And then you just have to really carefully balance this so that you stay right on that flat. And I kind of pay attention to see if I'm getting a full wood shaving, because if I get a full wood shaving, then I know I've got a nice clean surface. But it skipped a little bit right back here, so I'm going to go back in here and do this again. Don't want to do it too many times, because it will make the... Uh, It'll make the chamfer wider than the others. You need that blade to be 
extremely sharp. I've got a fairly shallow cut. Too heavy and you're going to risk tearing out wood fiber. Really sharp with minimal projection and you can sometimes actually go against the grain if it's not too extreme and still come out with a nice cut. Okay, so that was good. And you can see the color change and it feels wonderful. All right, now I'm gonna come in here and I've got to finish this corner off. So the router leaves it round. I want it to be nice and flat. So I made a little jig. It's just a uh, piece of wood with the corner cut out and then cut off on a 45 with it standing like that. And I made it so that all I have to do is reference it on the back right here. So when it's flush, that way all, all four legs are gonna have the exact same start point. I need to clamp this to the bench so that it doesn't move. Doesn't take a ton of pressure. Now I like to use my headgear so I can get a little better look at it. Now my chisel is an IBC chisel and I've got it sharpened within an inch of its life so it, you got to have it that way in order for it to work properly. The back has to be flat. Flat back on a chisel is the jig of the tool. If it's not flat you're going to be in trouble. It becomes very unpredictable. So before I end up laying in here, I spit all over my wood. Before I end up laying in here and doing this cut, I gotta come out here and slowly get rid of some of it. And I don't wanna go too deep because I don't wanna cut down into the chamfer and leave a mark. So I'll just come back here and carefully ease some of that off. And uh, by having not gone all the way back yet, I can come in here and cut away some of this material without fear of marking that little ramp I'm creating. Much easier to take small bites that require less effort. Gives you more control with the chisel. Try to do it in one big chunk and then that's when you get into trouble. Now I'm just making shearing cuts with the corner of the chisel. For some reason I can't see out of this thing very well. Oh, that's why. I think it's coming off. Ah, much better. sometimes the grain's going the wrong way so if I need to be planing this way and I'm having to fight with the chisel and go that way that's why I do a more of a shearing cut coming across which will minimize the effect of having those fibers get torn out remember don't go down too deep you don't want to cut into the flat of the chamfer I'm just trying to get rid of that stuff right there. A little difficult because you're having to cut in two directions and you don't want to leave a mark on either one. No, that's still too much. Try to take off a little bit. Now lay it right on there and I'm balancing on that little quarter inch chamfer so there's not a whole lot of reference surface. And if worst came to worst and I do have a little bit of a mark on there, I'll tap that back just a, a little bit. Just enough to allow me to come in there and get another cut to clean it up. Now, I still have that little section in here I gotta deal with. But we'll make sure that we've got material removed there. Now I'm gonna take this off. <clears throat> and I've got another similar jig. I cut a V and a piece of wood. I'm gonna put it on there like that. And I'm gonna clamp it in place. I use these quick clamps because uh, they're a light duty, or a medium duty, I think they call them, but it's just enough. And it doesn't end up marring anything. Now, I've got a piece of wood somewhere here that I had cut to rest my chisel on. 
Shoot, I hope my dad didn't get thrown out. Oh, son of a gun. You want to shut down for a second and see if I can find it? Oh, there it is right there. Good. Thank you. Just a scrap, and I adjust it with tape to get it to the right height because they're not all exactly the same. And I've got 16 of these to have done or do. So what I'm going to do is come in here. Actually, I want to be able to access it on this side, so I've got to move this back. So I'll come back here to where I've actually already made the cut. And that's too high. So I'll take off. I used a piece of scotch tape first on top of the masking tape. And the scotch tape is probably somewhere around 3 thou. The masking tape is a little better than four. Now I'm just making a very light pass using the corner of the chisel to make a shearing cut. All I'm trying to do is just get rid of the, uh, the mill marks from the router bit so that it'll match up and look the same color. into that corner. Now I'm having to freehand this one. I think I gotta come back and put do another little okay now haven't haven't got all the way over there and this is not allowing me what I want so I'm gonna take a piece of masking tape off and I'm gonna try piece of scotch tape instead ah, put it on the wrong side well it'll still work so I'm checking it down here where I actually did cut with the plane and make sure that it's not too low too deep. Just checking to make sure I'm still in the area where the tape is. Feel with my thumb, there's no, there, I don't feel any transition mark, which is exactly what I was wanting. Now I'm going to go back in and make one final little repair on that little ramp. I'll clamp that in place and I'll actually use the mallet to tap it where I want it. I don't have to take off very much. That's good. So a few different jigs all I've made here in the shop. Now I'll go and I'll do the other. I've got three more of those to do and then I'll go in and I'll do a final planing to get rid of the pencil, the uh, pen marks and get a nice finish out there. This by the way, will, the finish will, all the finish on this project will come right from the plane. There's no sanding at all. So but the advantage of that is it shows off the cherry incredibly well. In fact, I always tell people if you've never seen cherry finished directly from the hand plane compared to sanding, you don't know what cherry looks like. It's uh, literally alive. It's incredible. If you haven't seen it, 
try it. Get yourself a good plane, learn how to sharpen. It's incredible. Plane is the most efficient tool in the shop. Thanks for watching.